Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see how we can read the data from an Excel file in Databricks. So in this particular video, we are going to see how we can read the data from an Excel file which is placed in a storage account, which is placed inside a data lake. And we are going to see the process of reading the data in both Scala as well as Python. So let's move on and see exactly how we can do this. So as you can see on the screen, I already have the storage account. I have a container named as container one and inside that container, I have a sample Excel file as well. This is how my Excel file actually looks like. If you see over here, it has a header, first name, last name, gender, country, age and date and it has around 100 records. Right, so this is my sample Excel file which I have to read. Now to read it, I'll go back to my Databricks notebook. So if you see over here, the first command that I have placed, right, this command is nothing, but I'm just trying to connect to my storage account. I have already created a video on how to link storage account, how to link the data lake to the Azure Databricks, right? There are different ways to do that. I have gone with the simplest approach in this particular video. You can go ahead and check the other approaches as well and use the desired one. So this is how I am actually creating a connection to my storage account using the storage account key directly over here. So now let me run this particular command. And when I go to command number two, you will actually see that I am trying to place the location of my file. Now this is Scala, right? At this point, we are doing everything in the Scala. So now you can see that my command two is nothing, but it is creating a variable called as file location which contains the location of my file now let me simply run this particular command command 2 so this is nothing but the location of my file my file which is container 1 right it is placed in the storage account central us account and then this is my file name so this is the standard way if you have been watching my previous video so you already know that and then since i am using column function as well as the data frame so I'm importing, I have these import statements written in Scala at the moment because we are doing this in Scala first and then I'll show you the Python version of it. So this command three is just importing call and the data frame which I am using below from the Apache Spark.sql functions and Apache Spark.sql library. So now if you go to command number five, right, what I am showing over here is the actual function which is using which is which is reading your excel file so you can see the name of the function is also read excel right so this is nothing but the read excel function which takes in the parameters which is the excel url so where is that excel placed so that excel url is nothing but this is what i have uh, placed in the command 2 which tells me okay that this is the particular file location right and similarly it takes in the sheet name which sheet do i want to read so if i go back to my excel you see this is sheet one, right? So this is the sheet that I want to read. Now, similarly, it also says start position, right? Now start position basically refers to like from this particular Excel, where do I want to start reading from? Do I want to start reading this Excel from the cell A1, right? Which is the first name, right? Or do I want to read it from H1? So that is what this start position described. Right now, this function is nothing but it is taking that particular Excel file and using all the options that we have specified here. So these are the options. Header is true, like, okay, my file has header, so I have this option header true. Similarly, treat empty values as null. So do you want to treat empty values as null? I have put it as true at the moment. Do you want to infer schema? False or true? You know, based on your requirement, you can put any of this. And similarly, then I am saying dot load Excel URL. So load that particular Excel file, right, with all these options. Now, these options are not limited. So you have, now you can see the commented part right now in cell number five. Yeah, you know, in my command five, you can see all these commented options. So even if you want to, you know, add any additional columns to your Excel, you know, you can say, you know, add columns. Similarly, if you want to add colors to your particular cells, you can do that. You have an option to do that. If you want to add a particular timestamp format, right, you can do that. So things like that are already available as options. Now it depends on you which 
you want to use as per your requirements. So even if your notebook is password and uh, you know, even if your Excel file is password password encrypted, you can you know pass the password also over here in dot options. So these are the list of options that you can actually try and all this is available online. I will actually give you the link as well in the comment section. So this is nothing but this is the read Excel function. Now let me simply run this function, run this particular cell and then after that you can actually see that I go to command number 9. Now in this command I am calling this function which I have passed which I have shown you at the top read Excel right. Now I am passing the file location which I showed you at the top. I am saying that okay read sheet 1 because that was the input parameter for that particular function and a1 is nothing but the start position in that sheet 1 right. These are the uh, things that I am passing and then finally I am trying to map my columns and you know I'm trying to replace any extra characters that might have come in my columns I'm trying to replace it uh, over here and then I'm trying to put you know my columns in the uppercase right and finally I'm trying to write it so now you can see the df1 dot write dot format delta merge schema true mode overwrite you know I'm trying to write it at a particular location in my data deck right now let me run this particular command so the moment i run this particular command you will actually see let me go to my container over here right let me try to refresh my container so the moment i do this you will actually see that the output test get gets generated now this output test has excel underscore 100 so this is the name that i have given and it has the uh, you know the parquet files it has the delta tape so basically this is a delta table which has been created with the delta log parquet files have the delta log so you can see that the table is created so this is how you can read the file you can read it into a data frame if you want to do any manipulations on the data frame you any transformations on the data frame this is how you can actually do it but now the point here to note is right whatever i explained to you till now will now if you copy it and run it in your notebook is it going to work no it is not going to work why because if you closely look at the function over here it is saying spark dot read dot format spark dot excel right it is trying to fetch right it is trying to fetch this from a particular library right we need to install this on our cluster if you want to run these commands right you have to install the library on your cluster so if i go to compute section in my uh, cluster you can actually see this is my cluster now if i go over here right and i go to the library section you will actually see that i have this maven library in already installed right so this library you need to install to make sure that it reads your excel now I would also give you one more link over here. Now let's say I check this. Let me let, let me go to this particular link and show you. So you can see I will leave this particular link in the GitHub this GitHub link in the description box. So this kind of describes you the whole process in detail as well. Right. So based on the Spark version you are using right based on the Spark version you are using you have to choose the library as well right you you need to understand that right now you know you have spark uh, more than three right so you have to actually check what spark version you are using right and similarly you also need to check what scala version you are using now based on that you have to install the library so for example my scala version is 2.1.2 right so this is my scala version so the, now uh, in case you don't understand like what scala version you are using you can check it from your uh, databricks runtime so this is scala 2.12 spark 3.3.2 right now since my scala version is this basically to install the library click on install now go to the maven you know click on search packages over here you have to select maven central and then just paste it over here and then you will see that you get these libraries now you can see the spark hyphen excel underscore 2.13 right this is the version of my spark right so from here i choose the required one you can choose the latest one and then click on select so this is exactly what i have done and it is also described in this link uh, github page very well right they also have shown 
you know all these options which you can go ahead try out they also have a comment right uh, over here for you know reading the excel right now this is something that of course i'll leave the link in the description but i hope you understood how we can do it via scala so this is nothing but this is just uh, you know uh, reading of the excel file through databricks using scala now similarly since i have written it in form of a delta right i have a delta table created now let me try to read it now at the same location where i have written my particular uh, you know uh, excel file let me try to read from here as a data frame and try to display it now i am saying spark.read.format delta dot load load the file load the uh, delta table which is present at this particular location and now you can see that i have the excel file data in a data frame now whatever you want to do you can do it on top of the data frame so this is basically how you do it in scala now similarly if you want to do it in python right so you can use pandas for that so i am uh, this is a scala notebook now i'm showing you how to do it in python so if you see python over here right percentage python that is just because i'm using python over here in the scala notebook so this is just a magic command to make sure that the command run as a python command so now first of all i would be using pandas over here so that is why i'm just importing pandas and i'm giving it alias as pd right now just like you have installed library on the cluster over here right similarly you also need to install open py excel to work with excel in python you need to install this so let me put let me run this command so you need to install open py excel in case you want to uh, you know work on excels you know in python you need to install it so that is how you can directly do a pip install in your uh, notebook and then you can directly use pandas dot uh, pandas dot read excel so read excel is nothing but it is a pandas function it is an inbuilt function which is provided by pandas so you can directly use that function you can say pd pandas uh, pd is nothing but pandas right so pandas dot read underscore excel and then you actually have to provide the uh, you know the location of that excel right along with the key to access that particular excel file so when i say that if you look at this particular command that i have written so what i am actually doing over here so i have this particular http you know till here i am just copying if you see the highlighted part right what is exactly this this is nothing but this is the location of my excel file right so if i go to my storage account over here let me go to container 1 where my excel file is present and if i go here and if i click on properties for example right you will actually see that i get a path over here right this http path let me copy this particular path right now this path is nothing but what i have placed here so let me paste it over here to show you so this is the exact path that i have pasted here and then if you see what is the rest part rest part is nothing but it is the sas token you know this is the sas token this is exactly like my you know the storage account key as well right if you can see there is something called as shared access token you can click on this particular token and generate a token so sas token is nothing i have explained it in my previous videos as well to give you a limited access to your storage account you can generate a sas token they are valid for a particular time period with a specific access so you can generate a you know new sas token provide whatever access you want to you know uh, give that sas token if you give add create write delete so it will be able to you know whoever is using that right would be able to add create delete write list you know all these permissions they will they will be able to have while you know uh, reading from the data lake now similarly how long they are valid so like that you just generate the sas token and the url after generating you paste it over here right this is exactly what i have done right i also have the sas token over here right now let me just remove this part this is nothing but pandas.read_excel now you can see 
that I have created a pandas data frame. Now the output of it is, is a pandas data frame. Okay, this is not a Spark data frame. You are using pandas dot read underscore Excel. So the output is also a pandas data frame. So this is how the output looks like, right? It has hundred rows into six columns, exactly what we have. So now, since you have a pandas data frame, you need to, if you need to work in Spark, you need to convert your pandas data frame into the Spark data frame, and you know, pretty much. Command number 14 tells you the same. That spark dot create data frame and you pass in your pandas data frame that you have created above and it kind of gives you the spark data frame itself, right? So what you see on the screen right now is the Python way of taking in the Excel file from the storage account and you know, if you want to do any kind of transformations, you want to work with the Excel file, this is how you can actually do that. So I hope you like this particular video. Do let me know uh, if you have any questions in the comment section. And also do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for being till here.